if you were driving down the road and you pulled over because there was a car accident and someone was injured and you didn't know if they were going to live, would you be able to share the love of Christ and, and salvation with them in a short period of time? If not, stay tuned because that's what we're going to cover today. Hello, my name is Ennis Godfrey. Welcome to Quack This Way. I just want to say thanks for stopping by. If you're new here, I make videos about learning to make videos about Jesus, recovery, the Bible, and other pro making projects. Um, anything I enjoy. I'm using this as a learning experience to make videos and get good because I actually want to make videos to spread the word and the gospel to those that are lost and help those that are in recovery. Today I'm talking about sharing um, the gospel with someone in a short period of time, maybe two minutes. If that's in a situation like I described earlier, in a car accident, and you pull over and you see someone who's injured, you call the police or you call 911, um, hopefully you've got some medical training, uh, which is important, and then it's you and them, and you want to know as a Christian, are they saved? So we start off by asking two questions. The first question is, if you die today, are you certain that you're going to go to heaven? I really do believe that if you just asked a general question like, do you think you're going to go to heaven? People would say yes, but by when you bring up certainty or are you confident that you're going to go to heaven, it makes people think about it. So some people will say, I don't know. Um, a lot will say yes, and probably very few will say no. The next question is, okay, well, let's pretend that you died right now and you're up waiting to get into heaven and God asks you, why should I let you in? This will give us the answer of whether they're already a Christian or not. Many people will say something like, well, because I'm a good person, or I don't know why you should let me in. Um, and some will ex express their uh, belief in Jesus and receiving salvation uh, through his death and resurrection. So at this point, we take the option and we say, well, let me, let me go ahead and tell you what the Bible says. Right? And we go into four different verses. The first verse we say, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 And this means that everyone has sinned. At this time, you would take the moment, do you, you know, when I say the word sin, what comes to mind? Right? You ask them, what do you think of when I say sin? Some people will be able to tell you different things, but many will kind of like, uh, they will, they'll just kind of draw blank um, because of what the world teaches, right? Like the world doesn't teach right and wrong, but you can remind them of what the Bible says and, and, and reference the Ten Commandments. Um, it talks about, you know, not lying and stealing and cheating and committing adultery. And then we move on to the next verse. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So this is that point where we can show them, right? Everyone has sinned, but there is a way. Which leads us to the next verse, which you're probably familiar with, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And the last verse, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And God wants everybody to say, be saved, including you. At this point, we would ask them, does this make sense to you? Right? And if they say yes, we say, well, let me say a quick prayer. Or even if they say no, and they say, I have questions, you say, great, I'll, I'll get to your questions in a second. Just let me say a quick prayer for you. And then you pray for them. You pray for their health. You pray for the longevity. And you also pray that, that they would have the courage to accept Jesus into their life. Once you've done that, you then ask, you say, Bob or Sue or whatever their name is, and you say, if you would like to receive Jesus into your life, repeat after me. And you can lead them in a salvation prayer at that point. You could say something like, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Please forgive me. Wash me white as snow. Come into my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Right? It's that simple. Two minutes. Most people will give you two minutes. Um, as I said earlier, a car accident is not the only place. Um, we tend to go around and we hand out pamphlets sometimes to invite people to our church. And right before we go, we can say, hey, well, just let me ask you two quick questions, right? And you transition to the questions, you ask the questions, and you know where that person's at. Maybe you're out in the marketplace or at your work and you're able to talk to people and death comes up or, or tragedy, right? And you're able to say, man, that's crazy, isn't it? So many people died. And then you can transition. You know, well, just let, let me ask you two quick questions. If you died today, 
Are you confident that you would go to heaven? Right? And then they can go on from there. If a person is going to fight you with it, it's going to be right from the very beginning. Be polite, say no problem, walk away, pray for the person, and move on. Right? It's the Holy Spirit that saves them, not our works, but we need to be obedient to the Holy Spirit as they lead us to talk to people and not be afraid of sharing the gospel. Right? That's what the, the Word has told us to do. The Bible tells us to go into all the land. Right? Go into the world and make disciples of them. Right? And we want to share the gospel and then teach them up in the ways of the church and to grow them to become more like Christ and to become mature and then therefore start sharing the word with others. Just want to say thanks for stopping by and God bless you.